What is up? What is up? Um, this is a continuation to the tutorial. An updated fighting game sort of tutorial. The other one's good too. This one's even better. You can even do true combos with it. So it's actually relatively simple. Um, before we even start, press L1 and Square on both of your puppets. Make them have labels, but different labels. His label is friend. His label is foe. You go here, label him foe. For him, you go here, label him friend. So how do you actually get damage working in Dreams PS4? So this microchip, press L1 and X on him, then L1 and X on this, and this is that microchip right here after I press L1 and X on the orange thing right here. Um, inside of here, there's a health manager. This health manager goes off of labels, his label specifically, since his label's foe. If there is a health modifier, that can detect this label foe and if he's also label foe he will take damage his health manager will i also have this on both for detection you sometimes need to do that because some things are invisible and some things are uncollidable sometimes the puppet will be the health manager is on zone and per hit you can mess around with this for different types of attacks so how do I lay down these health managers? This is the most important part. So I press L1 and X, then I go up here, pull out a health modifier. These are health modifiers, by the way, the thing that I'm talking about. Then I lay it down, then I click it, right? Then I click the hand, then I just press plus. And then after I did that, I would uh, size down this hitbox and move it around. Then you'll be able to scope out. And then this health uh, manager will actually move with this hand, as you can see. Inside of all of your timelines that have attacks, you want to place a keyframe where the most important part of the attack is. So if the real punch is right here, that's when you'll want to lay down this keyframe. Make sure these health modifiers are turned off. Why do you want these things turned off? Because if you're walking around, you don't want to make it to where, unless you're punching, you're getting hurt, or you're, whoever you're punching is getting hurt. So that's why we turn off this health modifier um, and make it to where it only turns on whenever you're punching. Otherwise, he would get hurt without you having to punch. So make sure this is off make sure this keyframe turns this on. This keyframe can also adjust damage. So if you have lightweight attacks and strong attacks, uh, strong punches and uh, lightweight punches, the keyframe can also adjust how much damage it does. Do the same thing for kick areas. What you want to do is click... Um, just place it down the same way as you place down um, one for the hand. Link it together, group it together, and make it to where this turns it on. Whenever it gets to the most, uh, to where the punch should, uh, or the kick should uh, hurt the opponent. I actually haven't uh, laid one down for this. For an attack like that, thanks Smash Bros hitboxes, you can also have these keyframes uh, change the power of the knockback. That's what this mover is, and we'll talk about that here in a second. So, place down a keyframe, size it up by pressing the up button. Maybe have... This attack... Increase this. You also want to make sure this keyframe turns on this, and it can even move around this hitbox if you want it to, and size it up by pressing the up button if you need to. Mm. 
and that keyframe can do all that as well as change the amount of damage maybe you wanted to do a little bit more for a attack like this so this is what it looked like in real time Sometimes you gotta press rewind. It's not really, you know. So you can kind of see how dope this actually is. Allowing for true combos. I hope this helps you guys out. I do believe that's everything. Um, inside of here, place down a mover. This is for your bad guy. Turn this on local. And then I just have mine um, at 4.6, 92%, 67% and local. And then I put this arrow right behind them. I mess around with anything else, I don't think. And then um, currently losing health. That's inside of the power of this mover. And a destroyer, no more health inside the power of a destroyer. Press L1 and square on this. Control sensor. And there will be this thing called no more health inside of the respawn or something. Whatever is connected to this respawn thing, just delete that. You might also want to delete this as well. Then if you're trying to make a 2D game, just make it to where the 2D movement's on right here. As well as right here. Then you might want to turn up the turn speed as well is turn up the anticipated walk all the way for both of the characters. Pull out a camera pointer that's in your gadgets up here. Should be like right here. Just place it down somewhere. And this camera pointer goes off of this camera, so just adjust the camera distance as you want to, you know. But make sure this is like, you know, pointed in a 2D direction. It doesn't have to like be pointed, you know, directly at the thingy, but, you know. Then you just want to make flinch animations. Check out my animation tutorial. So whenever you're losing health, uh, currently losing health, have an animation for whenever he loses health and flinches and whatnot. And then you want to do this kind of thing for your character as well that you're playing as. And then they're in here in the puppet interface. There's this thing called go backwards and go forwards. If you wanted to, you could connect things like currently losing health into these things as well. I just used a mover. It's easier for me. And that's how it's done. It's real simple. Um, real simple. Um, if I didn't say so already, they both have hitboxes, right? Built-in hitboxes. He has one, and he has one. Use this for wall detection and not for detection of uh, the characters. You know, this will make it to where. Um, there won't there won't be any clipping if they if the characters touch walls so make sure it's big if you want to do that and make sure it's not um touching the feet like that you want to have it like right above the feet otherwise you can get in the way of the walk cycle then what you want to do is make it to where this hitbox doesn't detect foe or friend or anything else that can be a character in your game and uh, do the same thing for him for a friend. Since he is detecting friend, since he's a friend, this hitbox, if this was on, it would detect friend and then it would do something like this. So have that off. Then you want to make sure he doesn't detect foes because otherwise it would do the same thing. So both of those have to be off. Then check out my Dreams PS4 blocking tutorial. That'll help you guys out with flinching as well as how you can get blocking in Dreams. 
um, using uh, wireless receivers and transmitters, or you can just use a system with uh, health managers if you wanted to. Plow the destroyer, no more health, put that in the power of the destroyer. Or you could have a timeline, have it to where he falls to the ground, and then the destroyer activates, and then a U windscreen activates. Check out my fatality tutorial if you guys need help with that as well. As well as my other fighting game tutorial, it works good too. This is an update to that.